All right, hi everyone. My TED Talk is about Huntington's disease and the research done by Jiang Su Chun that offers a potential treatment. So before we start, let's see a show of hands. How many people know what Huntington's disease is? Besides it being a disease and named after a guy named Huntington. Oh. <laughs> okay, so a lot of people. George Huntington was the first to describe this disease in 1872. So what is Huntington's disease? Basically, Huntington's disease is a neurological disorder that progressively limits muscle coordination and cognitive ability. Over time, this disease gets progressively worse. This disease has an effect on one's, oops, oh, one's thinking, emotion, and movement. Symptoms include poor memory, depression, <laughs> lack of coordination, and so on. While late stages of this disease make it difficult to do simple daily tasks such as getting dressed in the morning. In the United States alone, about one out of every, out of every 10,000 people have Huntington's disease. Oh, okay. By looking at this brain comparison, and without any knowledge about how the brain is supposed to look like, you can tell there is a vast difference between the two. Huntington's disease causes the progressive loss of cells in the brain, leading to physical, emotional, and mental decline. The brain on the left is a slice from someone with late-stage Huntington's disease, while the right is a normal brain. As you can clearly tell, the brain on the left is highly atrophied from continuous cell loss. Moving on to biology for a moment, Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant disorder. What this means is only one defective gene is necessary to display symptoms. Therefore, a child has a 50-50 chance of inheriting this disease. If you remember uh, Punnett squares from biology, this is also explained. Okay. In this family tree, the red shapes represent people with Huntington's, Huntington's disease. The blue represent people without it. Supposedly, Huntington's disease is passed on to half of the population, but this is not necessarily the way probability works. Genetic testing can be done to determine if someone has Huntington's disease, and everyone with a defective gene will eventually develop symptoms, generally around the ages of 30 to 50. Following diagnosis, the average life expectancy is 15 to 20 years. Unfortunately, there is no current effective treatment for Huntington's disease, and clearly this is one of many problems we still have today. So what can be done about this? One possible way is through stem cell research. Stem cells are basically unspecialized cells that have the potential to develop into other types of cells. There are two types of stem cells. Embryonic stem cells, from embryos, obviously, and adult stem cells, from <coughs> bone marrow, fat, or blood. Stem cells also have the ability to divide into more stem cells. They are able to act as an internal repair system, dividing repeatedly to replace lost cells, whether it is muscle cells, red blood cells, brain cells, or nearly any other type of cell. As you can see from these two pictures, stem cells are extremely useful, extremely useful because of their ability to divide into more stem cells and develop into other types of cells. And this brings me to the subject of my topic. Zhang Su Chun is a neuro neuroscientist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He's an expert at creating various brain cells from stem cells. In addition, he's the senior author of a recent study reported on March 15 of this year in which movement can be restored in mice with conditions similar to Huntington's disease. This new study focuses on the creation of GABA neurons. What these neurons do is they basically produce a key neurotransmitter, a chemical that helps transmit signals in the brain. The loss of these neurons um, lead to the loss of motor control in Huntington's disease. Zhang and his team were able to create many of these GABA neurons using stem cells in mice. Thus, they were able to repair the damaged communication networks and restore motor control. So what does this all mean? How does this impact our world? And how does this impact us as individuals? First off, and most obviously, Zhang's research offers the potential to treat Huntington's disease via cell therapy. However, this treatment is not viable. It's only viable in mice tests currently, but the goal is to work up to the human treatment. This research also impacts our world in a different way, unrelated to the treatment of Huntington's disease. Currently, the human brain is seen by neuroscientists to be generally stable and unresponsive to cell therapy. By being able to fix the broken communication networks in the brain, this research implies that the human brain is more susceptible to change than previously thought, opening up chances, possibilities of medicine. So how does this impact us as, as, impact us as individuals? Besides from the treatment of Huntington's disease, 
This research offers the possibility of treating various numerous diseases. Already stem cells have the potential to treat many conditions such as cancer, Parkinson's disease, brain or heart damage, neurological disorders, and many more. This can lead to groundbreaking advancements in medicine and provide numerous treatments for really any genetic disorders and diseases. Zhang Su Chen's recent research and overall research in stem cells may not be the only way towards treating diseases and a better future, future but it certainly is a viable one in our new future.